Hi all, this tutorial is based on a few student requests I've had on how to make a simple tile and texture or an alternative way to make a tile and texture. So the example I've got here is just a kind of maybe a marble or some sort of composite tiling floor here with these big panels. And basically when doing something like this, I wanted it to be very low profile, so not much detail in terms of height difference, but I did want to have these uh, seams in it in these panels. Now, and a really, really good way of doing stuff like this is to use Substance Designer because it is the industry standard for making tile and textures uh, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. So once you have actually set up that in Designer, you can then make changes to it very fast and it is really good for stuff like that. But it can take quite a long time to set up and also, you know, not everybody is uh, proficient at Substance Designer. It does take a little while to get used to it, to get proficient at just being able to produce any kind of tile or, or tile and texture that you want. So an alternative way is to just use like the trim sheet method, which is to make it in Maya and project that down onto a, a plane in Substance Painter. And then once you've got that projected information, you can texture it any way you want. And then what I like about that is you can also do changes in the uh, Maya asset and update that Substance Painter file for some variations. So it's not quite as flexible as Substance Designer, but it is a pretty fast method. So this tutorial will be split into two halves. The first half will be the full pipeline of making your first tiling texture using May and Substance Painter. And the second half will show you how to then make changes to that initial model, maybe damages to your tiling texture and update your Substance Painter file with the new changes. I will also then show you how to uh, insert that into UE4 and set it up ready for rendering. So the first thing we want to do is create a plane and this will be our tile that we project everything else onto in Substance Painter. So make sure you've got the grid up and grab yourself a plane. Uh, now I've got interactive creation on so if you go to polygon primitives down at the bottom there you'll see a checkbox for interactive creation. With the plane selected holding X on the keyboard you can snap the start of this to the grid point and drag this out. Uh, to whatever size you want. Now you want it to be absolutely square and you want it to be, to be big enough that you have some grid points to snap to because this is what we'll use to try to make sure our tiles are tiling properly. So we also need to jump into the UV editor and just make sure that this is tiling one-to-one, -one, okay? So sometimes when you drag a plane out, you might loot something like this in the UV editor. You just need to make sure you grab that, and snap it to the edge, and just also make sure that everything is really square. So you can do that by going to UVs, select the edge ones, go to scale, and then just scale that in to make sure they're absolutely flush. Or you can grab the whole shell, go to your UV toolkit, and go to unfold and straighten UVs. But most likely it should already be like this. And what we need is this to be one-to-one -one with the UV grid. This is where the uh, tiling will begin and start from. Okay, so once we've got our tile, we should name it so we can find it easily. So I'm just gonna name this tile A. So now we can start to build up our blocks, bricks, tiles, or whatever else you want your floor or wall to be made out of. So it doesn't matter how big or small you make this stuff. So for example, if we were doing really big blocks, we might want to just do one big one here and then we want to stagger them. So what I'll do is, first of all, I'll just snap my pivot to the grid. So I'm gonna hold D and X and just snap this to a grid point. And then I'm gonna duplicate this big block and holding X, just drag that down. And then, cause I want these to stagger, I'm gonna drag it this way. Make sure that it lines up with the middle of that tile and then drag it this way as well. And that way we know that this, where this gets cut off here, we'll come back on here and this will tile perfectly as long as our textures tile also. Uh, so that's a very simple way to do that. I'm going to make a slightly more complicated one. I want a parquet floor uh, or a, a herringbone pattern floor. So to do that, I'm going to drag a small tile out here, give it some thickness. And I'm also going to bevel the edges of this slightly. Now, when this is projected in Substance Painter, it's gonna be projected perfectly from the top. So if we look here, it'll be projected like this. And any faces that are perfectly 90 degrees uh, facing sideways will not show up in the projection. It won't show up in your normal map either. It won't show up in, in any way. Um, so you will get less 
of a feeling of depth. So it is good if you can, or if it, it makes sense for what you're making, making a bevel on the edge, because that will show up in the normal map and give a much better feeling overall. So I just want to make this bevel a little bit bigger, actually. Now I'm going to snap this pivot to the grid point in the corner. So D and X, grab the little yellow circle in the middle, just drag that over to that grid point. And now I'm going to start laying out this flooring. So first of all, I'm going to duplicate this and just do a pivot with a snap rotate on. So I've already got this set to 45 here. So if I just pivot this, it'll snap to 45 degree angles. And I'm going to move this down and just align it with the other one. And then I'm going to keep doing this until I've filled up this entire grid. Okay, so you can see here, we move this one away. So you can see how this, that final one lines up with perfectly with the edge here and would appear here if we were to tile this. And the ones that go slightly over the edge also go slightly over the edge. The same amount there. So because we've lined this to the grid and we've kept these all the right size, it's meant that it's been a really easy job to tile. Now we probably want these to be on a 45 degree angle so that this zigzag pattern runs central to this here um, but that's really hard to, to make line up on the grid you can have a go at that uh, but it might be difficult uh, nearly impossible to do it's much easier just to do it like this uh, geometrically and then rotate that texture on whatever item you're about to apply it on once you've finished all the texture and everything uh, yeah so that's a little tip much easier to do this now you might also want some grout in between uh, these tiles so I would say these are wood or maybe marble um, and most likely they would be quite tight without grout but if for some reason your bricks or whatever you're making does have grout in them then we can do that by either adding a separate element between these or if we just make the gap between these a little bit bigger um, that should give us enough information to add some nice grout in Substance Painter. Now if I did want to have a little tiny gap between all these what I would need to do is select them all and then I'm going to go to Mesh and then go down to transform. Now, unlike just scaling these down, this transforms it equally on all sides. So it kind of shrinks them down. So we get a nice even gap between everything. So just want a tiny little bit of grout between these. And then just for a tiny bit of variation, what I'm gonna do is come into these and I'm just going to give them ever so slight rotates. And then I'm just going to skew a few of these a little bit so that it's not so perfect. I just need to make sure the ones that I'm skewing don't go over the edge so that they don't mess up the alignment with whatever comes back on the other side. Because unlike my tutorial on making tiling textures in ZBrush, obviously this is an automatically update uh, across the seams. Okay, now what we can do is we can just move this down a little bit so it intersects ever so slightly with that bottom tile. And now I've not got any, uh, I've not got like a, a grout object between here, but you could do if you want, if, if say you wanted something a bit more detailed, maybe with some sort of pattern to it or something like that, you know, you could just even use that tile. So if we just grab that tile A and duplicate it and move it up slightly, you know, you could set the exact height of that grout and that could be your uh, grout material. Uh, all you need to do is just combine it back with the other stuff. And there we go. So now we've got two objects. We've got our uh, tiles on the ground and we've got our tile underneath, which will be our projection tile. So all we need to do is export this out and we can export that out as OBJs or FBXs. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to export the base tile as tile A and then I'm going to export these parquet floor. This will be my high poly projection. So I'm going to export that as tile A high. And that's it currently for the Maya stage. We can jump into Substance Painting now. Depending on what material your tiles are, this would be a good stage to take these high poly tiles into ZBrush to add some extra detailing to them. So for example, if they were rough wood, now would be a good time to create a nice wood sculpted effect on these, uh, save out the high poly, and then bring that into Substance Painter. So in Substance Painter, I want to create a new file and select my tile A and it's on 2K, I'm fine with that. It's set to Unreal Engine 4 because that's the engine I'm using. Okay, and then once that loads in, you should get something like this. 
So you won't be able to see any at first and that's because you are perfectly aligned with the side of the tile. So if you just hold Alt and drag down, you'll be able to see that tile. And you can also get your 3D and 2D view up as well so you can see what's happening in the 2D view also. And the first thing we want to do in Substance Painter is bake our high poly down to this tile. So to do that, we can go down to our texture set settings and bake mesh maps. And in the bake mesh maps, we want to go to the high definition meshes and load in our tile A high. Now, because this is just a plane, the automatic cage that's made around it will be quite tight and it will probably cut off most of the information from the tile. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and show you what that might look like. Okay, so you can see as them tiles aren't that thick, it doesn't look like that it's actually cut anything off. But I will just have a closer look. So it may have cut off some top information there, not quite sure. But we'll check that out by going to bait mash maps again and just increase the frontal distance and the rear distance a little bit as well. And I'm also going to come down here and turn up anti-aliasing to 2x2. Two two. Okay, so we can see now that point that looked like it was cut off is now gone. So if we check out our normal and height mesh map, we can see we have our tiles in here now. And we can't really test it in Substance Painter. Now we have to wait until we bake these maps out, but it looks like it's tiling to me. Now it might be a good idea for you to go to File Export Textures and export these into a temporary folder uh, so that you can then take this normal map into Maya and apply it onto a larger object so that you can see whether it tiles or not. Or alternatively, you could take it to Photoshop and just copy and paste it, snapping it together just to test that it tiles before you do any more painting work. If you need to do any adjustments in uh, Maya to the original mesh, now's a good time to do it. But this looks okay to me, so I'm gonna risk it and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm just gonna make these maybe some sort of white marble, I think. So I'm gonna create a new folder this marble and in that folder I'm going to create a new fill layer I'm only going to keep this simple uh, I'm gonna make that fill layer white because this will be the base of the marble and I'm also going to give it quite high specularity sorry roughness a reflection value now what I'm doing here is just holding shift and left click sorry shift and right click to move the environment around that so I can keep checking out the, the specularity of these tiles. Okay, so I want to duplicate this layer and make one slightly darker because I want to add a little bit of dappled uh, specular to this, little, little specks to it. So maybe make it a little bit warmer as well. And then on this, I'm going to add a black mask and in that mask, I'm going to uh, mask out little dots. So I'm gonna add a fill to this black mask. And in the grayscale slot of this fill, I'm gonna look through until I can find something that kind of is made up of lots of little dots. And that'll be my first kind of texture on this marble. So I'm gonna try gradient flakes uh, and just change the size of them. And then I want to scale them as well. So I'm not sure if these ones will actually work, but when you're adding grunge maps to this, anything that touches edge to edge, you need to really be careful of the, the tiling of these pieces. So most of the grunge maps that come with Substance Painter do tile, but only if they are kept one to one. So here where it's a grout line, where it's an edge of the, the tile, it really doesn't matter because that indentation will hide any non-repeating of the pattern anyway but places like this you really want to try and avoid creating uh, patterns on here that don't tile off the edge and come back on the other side for obvious reasons so to do that you want to if you come to the scale you want to make sure that you you keep the scale size as whole numbers so if you just do a random size you're going to end up getting cuts at the edge though that don't tile so if you do make them different sizes just make sure that you try and keep it whole numbers like this okay so that's my first layer of detail to these tiles now I want to add some veins to it so again I'm going to add another fill and I'm going to make these fairly dark and then I'm going to add another black mask to this and again add a fill 
And in this fill, I'm going to try and find a marble vein pattern. Now, I do think that Substance Painter does come with some marble veins as standard. Yep, so we've got a few different choices here. So this one might be a little bit too intense. Actually, that's quite nice. And I think the last thing I want to do is add some breakup with specularity on top of this. So first of all, I'm going to change the specularity on some of the textures that I've already made. So for the little dots, I'm going to increase the specularity on them so that they catch the light a little bit more. And then with the veins, I might just decrease the roughness on the veins. And so I'm going to make a master roughness over the top of all of that now. So I'm going to create a new layer and this time I'm going to turn off everything but roughness. I'm going to turn that up quite a lot. And then I'm going to add a fill to this. A black mask, sorry. And add a fill to the black mask. And in this, I'm going to find a nice kind of grungy breakup or a scratch breakup. There's a couple of things missing on this. First of all is we want to add some grout to this uh, and we could probably do with changing a few of the patterns on some of this because it's quite obvious that the pattern just goes across from one tile to the other, which isn't very realistic. So to do that, what we could do is create another file, another folder, and we could call that grout. And in there, we'll just make a quick texture. So jump that in grout, make this kind of maybe some dark grout or I think gold grout is like a, a popular thing at the moment it's in trend so that'd be kind of cool to do so you could grab gold from one of the materials but I do like to make my own materials um, so I want to make this kind of metallic turn the roughness up just turn that model off so we can see maybe like a rose gold Okay, then I want to add a little bit of bump to this. So again, I could probably just add a fill to the height in this. Something noisy. Got some noise. And turn the scaling of this up quite high. And then what we can do to reduce the uh, strength of this is just change the layer, blend it into uh, height, sorry, the layer mode to height, and then just in the opacity of that height, just turn that right down. So we want to be able to mask these out. So we could do this to the marble or grout. You've got to decide what you want on top. So we move the grout to the top and then add a black mask to that. What we can do in the black mask, we could add a paint and then with the paintbrush, maybe a nice hard brush. We go down some brushes here and double click one of these, basic hard. What we could do is click, hold shift, and control to snap that angle to a degree, and then click again. And we can start going around adding the grout to in between these tiles. Uh, but another way to do this is actually to assign vertex colors to the uh, high poly that we baked. So if we look in our texture set settings here, we have actually an ID map, and nothing is baked in this even though it was ticked on. So if we go to ID map, you can see we can source this from various things. So we can go from material color, file ID, mesh ID, poly group. So if we try vertex color, what we can do is come back to our mail file and select all of these and go to mesh display, apply color, and go on the little selection box on apply color, pick a color from here and click apply. Find your grout. Pick another colour and apply that to the grout. And last of all, I'm going to select just a few of these tiles. And again, apply different materials to that as well. Okay, so now we can export this high again. So we want to select that, not the uh, tile underneath, just the high poly. And we want to export this out. So this time we're going to export it as an FBX, not an OBJ. Now, if you've not got FBX or OBJ exporter activated, you can do that by going to settings, preferences under windows, go to plugin manager, and you just want to search for FBX. 
and make sure that they're all ticked on loaded. Same with OBJ as well. So this time we're going to export this out as an FBX because I'm not sure how to get vertex coloring working in OBJ from Maya. I'm sure there's a way, but it's pretty simple to do in FBX, so this works fine. Uh, so once you've exported that back into Substance Painter, we can go to Bait Mesh Maps. And in Bait Mesh Maps, we want to turn everything off except for ID. All right, make sure that vertex color is selected on ID. And back in Common, also make sure that your FBX is loaded. And we can leave everything else the same and bake that. Okay, so we go up here, change material to ID. We can see now we have different colors that represent the different uh, parts of this mesh. So what that will allow us to do is if we go down to layers here and select our grout, we can just delete the paint. And instead of this black mask, we can right click this and add a mask with a color selection. And this will give you a little eyedropper here that you can then use to mask out the areas that you want to be, for example, grout. So if we click this little pick color, it'll get our ID up and then we select the grout. We can see now that automatically masks everything uh, that is that color. Now I also want to add a variation to this marble. So what I'm gonna do is go down to the marble veins and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to add a subfolder. Just call it veins two. And I'm going to drop that in that folder. And then I'm going to go down to the marble veins of that layer. And I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to also make a folder for the first one as well. This just makes it a little bit easier to organize. We don't want them crossing over. So I'm gonna add a black mask. I'm gonna add a mask with color selection to this one. I'm just gonna hide that up one for now. Uh, so I've added the mask to the actual folder. So inside this folder is just that veins two, uh, veins one, sorry. And with this color selection, I'm gonna pick my first bricks. So you can see that's just applied to there. And then in this second one, I'm gonna add a mask with color selection to the group. And in that color selection, I'm going to pick my second tiles. Oh yeah, and turn it on. So now you can see we have a little bit of variation in the direction of some of these. Uh, and you can carry on doing this. You, there's many ways you could do this. You could go in and add your own veins by hand or one for each tile, mask it out with the black and white mask. It's pretty simple to do, but it's just a really quick demonstration. So this will pretty much be okay. And just to finish this off, I'm going to add another folder on top of all of this. Just call it dirt. And in that, I'm gonna add just a quick brown material. And then I'm gonna just drag a, maybe a dust occlusion into this. Sometimes it takes a while to find the right one. Probably best to make your own. And again, you've got to be careful with this kind of stuff because it will start to show uh, where it repeats unevenly. Okay, so I think that'll do it for this. So once you're happy with your tile, you can go to File, Export Textures. So I'm going to export it as UE4, make sure it's 2K and in the correct folder. And then as a bonus in UE4, I'll just show you how to set that up. So I've got some texture folders here. So what I'm gonna do is just recreate my folders here. Uh, marble, tile. And then I'm gonna grab my tiles and just drag them into there. And then I'm gonna create a new material. Call it marble, tile, A. And then in here, First of all, uh, the multi-materials, so we've got base color and normal, and we've got this occlusion roughness metallic, and we just need to double click that and make sure that sRGB is switched off and that's saved or else it will not render properly. So once we've done that, we can grab these, and pull them into our material editor, and then we can plug these up. Okay, so what we want is for the base color into base color, 
the normal into normal, of course. And then for this one, uh, red is the ambient occlusion. And then the next one down is green, which goes to the next one up, which is roughness. And then the final one, blue, is metallic, which is the highest one. Okay, and we can save that. And then we drag this and drop it onto a tile in our scene. You can see that renders nicely there. And we've got our simple uh, tile all set up in UE4. Okay, so we'll just drag these onto these other ones. This one won't tile properly because it's, uh, it's a much bigger tile and it's not lined up properly. Um, but these ones should tile nicely. There we go. Maybe I could turn down the roughness a little bit. It's a little bit too shiny at the moment. Um, but that's no problem, that's a very quick fix. All we need to do is save over the materials that we just made. Turn that roughness down a little bit. All right, so uh, the benefit of this is now, you know, we've, we've made the, the texture color, we've made our folder structure and everything. Uh, so we could make quick changes to this if we really wanted to. So here we have, on these ones, we have some broken ones and stuff like that. So say we wanted to do that to one of these tiles or remove a couple maybe. What we could do is just go back to our Maya file just say delete one of these and then what I'm going to do is select another one and I'm going to just shift right click and extract so that we've got that tile by itself and I want to smash this apart and there's an easy way to do that uh, and it's using something called shatter uh, so to get this up what we can do is go to effects and under effects we want to go to effects here and go down to shatter and then click the options box on shatter and you'll get this up here. Uh, so we want solid shatter on here and you can increase or decrease the shard count here or the edge jaggedness here. So if you try to do this now, most likely nothing will happen and you'll get this error message. Uh, to solve that, you of course want to delete history of free transformations and probably center the pivot on it as well. But you need to go to uh, assign new material. So if you right click it and assign new material and just create a new material like a Lambert and then try this again you see it'll shatter now i'm not sure why that works like that but uh, so it will keep the old one as well so you'll have two meshes so you'll have to delete the original mesh mesh um, but this might take a few goes to get it right so this hasn't shattered in the way i would like it to so i'm just going to undo that and i'm going to go back to shatter and i'm just going to change the shard count Okay, and then I'm going to go into this and just delete some of these shards. Move them around a little bit as well. So again, this is an interior uh, piece. It's not going over one of the corners, so it should be uh, fine when it comes to tiling. So it's not the best shatter, but it'll do for my purposes here. Okay, so I can select that and recolor it with one of these marble colors so I want to go back to modeling mesh display apply color I've applied the same color the last color that I applied so once that's done we can select all that combine it back together and export this this time I'm going to call it uh, tile a broken a make sure it's an FPX and then back in Substance Painter, uh, make sure this is saved so we can create a, a new Substance Painter save called Broken. We don't want to lose this information in case we need to come back and change it. Uh, we can go to Texture Set Settings, Bake Mesh Maps. This time I want to turn everything on. And I want to load in my new FBX, which is the Broken AI, and bake that. So as you can see here, Substance Painter is automatically updated with our new normal map information here. So uh, this probably wouldn't be a big strip of grout like that. So what we can do is just create another folder, ground or concrete or something like that. And this time I'm just gonna grab a material for the sake of speed. Just drop that in there. And I wanna replace that, that height information. So while we've got height up here, I'm gonna go to replace there. Okay, and then we can just right click, add a black mask, and this time I'm just going to paint in, add paint where this ground should be. So, you know, it might not, you might not want to have it so neat, you might want to show some of the grout in here. So what we can do is maybe go to brushes here, pick something a little bit more 
rough. Okay, and then we want to grab that marble and just put it on top of that ground. And I'm going to add a mask with colour selection to the marble. To bring that back on top. And then maybe in that ground we could go like this. Create some sort of like a, an adhesive. So this could be like a, a yellowish putty. Then we could add a black mask to that. Add a paint. Could paint some blobs in of that. I know this isn't necessarily what adhesive looks like, it's probably more trails along the ground, but um, this will do for just a quick example. Okay, so now we've got some shattered parts in this. So once you've done that, I mean this is really fast, but once you've worked on that and made it look nice, we can just export these textures, and this time we want to put them into a new folder. So like so. So you might have to come in and rename these more appropriately. But once you've got them, what we can do is back in UE4, we can right click this and actually create a material instance. So then we need to come back to the original one and we just want to right click these and convert to parameters and save that. Now, because this is an instance, when we double click this, we'll get these up. So we don't have to rebuild this texture now. We can, anything what we do to this one changes to that one. So if we say, make it tile more or something like that, we'll automatically update any instances we have. And you might have several instances with different versions of the tiles. So all we need to do is tick these on and then we need to load in our textures. And again, we need to make sure that sRGB is ticked off on the multi-map and then we can just load these into just drag and drop them into the correct slots here and save that and then back in materials just grab that material and drag it onto the one we want with the damage this seems maybe a little bit overly lit you can see we can quickly get some variants in the floor here and it's very easy to go back and make any changes so you can see i've done that for a few different tiles here. And I've even made uh, an object shape and just applied this same material to this object. Um, so it looks like there's some loose tiles as well underneath the broken stuff. And you can see I've done a lot more work with the concrete and the grout on these ones. So it looks a lot more realistic. Yeah, so you can see how fast it can be to create these tiles and the uh, the amount of variation you can, you can do. And obviously this isn't the only way. I mean, you can actually do this all in Substance Painter. There are uh, brick, uh, tiling generators and stuff in Substance Painter if you wanted to do something like that uh, you just don't get as much options when it comes to stuff like uh, the modeling that you can do in Maya and also you could take these into ZBrush and add a lot more detail to them in there as well so yeah uh, well, this is just one way of making tiling textures and you might find it useful when you're in a pinch or you can't seem to do it uh, another way this might be just the the technique that works for you in that situation so thanks for watching and if you've got any comments or anything that i might have skipped over or something that you didn't understand just uh, please leave a comment below and i will get back to you as soon as possible uh, thanks for watching